I want to talk about a very interesting topic, okay? There's actually a gene in your body right now that can protect you against disease, especially cancer. And the name of this gene is NRF-2. Now, you don't need to know the name of it, but I put it down there if you're interested. But it triggers hundreds of other genes that have a function of cytoprotection. They protect the cell. This gene, which, by the way, turns into a protein, the NRF-2 protein, is coined Master of the Antioxidant Responsive Element, okay, A-R-E. So basically, it activates a lot of antioxidants in your body. In other words, there are external antioxidants, and then there are internal antioxidants that your body makes. It's called endogenous. So this gene regulates the endogenous antioxidant genes. It also helps regulate the detoxification genes, as well as the genes that control inflammation. So many different health conditions um, occur because there is some type of mitochondrial dysfunction. You have this oxidative stress, whether it's from a carcinogen, uh, smoke, UV radiation, radiation, chemicals in the environment, lack of nutrients, stress, etc., etc. All this creates oxidation to the inside of your body, including free radical damage to the DNA, which then can create cancer. So if there's any mitochondrial dysfunction, this NRF2 machinery kicks in. It starts to neutralize the oxidation and free radicals coming from the carcinogens to help you avoid DNA damage and disease and cancer. Now, what they found is certain people have an overexpression of this gene. It's, it's more activated. And those are the people who can eat junk, smoke, drink whiskey, and live till they're 90 or 100 years old. Then you have those people that have this gene expressed normally. And they are prone to diseases and cancer to a certain degree. And then you have other people who have an underexpression of this gene, and they're very prone to getting cancer. Now, I know your next question is going to be, well, what if I'm in that category? What can I do, right? Well, the good news is this. You have genes, which you're not defined as and you have epigenetics, which actually is above genetics. So in other words, epigenetics controls your genes. So even though your genes are telling the body to do a certain thing, if the epigenetic factors are, are active, that can overcome that expression of that gene. All that means is you have to work harder at your epigenetics, and that's your environment, that's your stress level, that's your nutrition, that is avoiding certain chemicals in the environment, that is keeping your exercise consistent, keeping your stress level in check, as well as consistent, good, high quality sleep, and consuming certain foods that naturally have high levels of these antioxidants that you can benefit from, as in cruciferous vegetables, and there are many others. Now, I just started studying this topic. I think it's fascinating. I'm, I'm deep into it right now. I'll, I'll be creating some additional videos I'm very interested to find out if and where someone can get tested on this gene. I would like to know that. But until you get tested, if you want something to do, start focusing on your epigenetics. If you want more data on that, I put the link down below. Check it out. So someone uh, made a comment on one of my YouTube videos recently, and they said, my grandfather ate bread, sugar, and drank alcohol, whiskey his entire life, even smoked, and he lived to be over 90 years old. So how do you explain that, Dr. Berg? I thought that if we consume these foods, we're supposed to die early. Well, here's the thing. Everyone comes into this world with a different package, different genes, different uh, family histories. So if you had several generations before you that really took care of their bodies, they ate healthy, um, consumed food from fertile land, you're gonna probably end up with some pretty robust genes because there wasn't a lot of things to weaken those genetics. So you probably could then be the person who gets away with it. Uh, there are certain countries that have perfect bone structure and teeth, like in Africa. They live off food that is grown on volcanic soil. So you get all these amazing trace minerals that build really healthy bone structure then you have other countries that produce different types of foods that you end up with a lot of teeth decay. Like in the UK, there's a tremendous amount of sugar, refined foods, and, and dental issues. Same thing with the US. 
So depending on your genetics, your family history, the foods, the country that you live in, it can make a huge difference of where you are on the spectrum. But the great majority of people, unfortunately, develop metabolic diseases earlier and earlier. But there's usually a point in someone's life, a time that things start to break down. For me, it was 28 years old. You see, before that, I could eat bread, and I ate a ton of bread, a ton of sugar, and I definitely drank alcohol. And I had absolutely no symptoms whatsoever. I felt great, so I can get away with it. And that's why I had no attention on it. I didn't want to change because I felt fine. At that point in my life, you couldn't educate me about keto or cutting off carbs because I, didn't, I wasn't fat. I felt great. I had no problems until 28 years old, and then I started to really start to go downhill. And that's when I started to make some changes. So there are several factors that would determine if this is 28 years old or earlier or a lot later. That would be your genetics, how robust your genes are from your family tree. Then you have epigenetics, the environment, what happens in the environment, your eating habits, your stress level pollution. There are a lot of factors that are epigenetic factors, which are basically even above the, the genetics. What happened with me when I was 28 is I went through tremendous stress right before that, going through school and, and starting out in practice. And I know that did not help, compounded by the fact that I was eating completely refined, empty calories without any type of vegetables whatsoever or anything nutrient dense. And then you have your health reserve. How much reserve do you have? And then your attitude, which is another factor, which is very, very, very important. Probably should be at the top of the list. You have some people that are so positive, they're so up, that they never get sick. So this is a really important factor as well. All right, there you have it. That's my response to this question. I recently did a video on a very amazing gene, the NRF2, which is like a gene that protects you against disease and especially cancer. And I found some additional interesting data on this that I want to share with you. But if you haven't seen the first video, watch that first. I'm going to put a link down below of exactly what it does. But this gene is like the, um, the master gene that activates hundreds of other genes that protect your cells. And these other genes are related to antioxidants because your body has networks of antioxidants. So antioxidants don't just come from external sources from your food. Your body makes them. So they come from within. And the term for that is endogenous. So this gene regulates endogenous antioxidants as well as the detoxification genes, which helps break down things that cause cancer, like chemicals in the environment. We call those carcinogens. So this gene protects against trauma, emotional stress, uh, pollution, toxins, UV radiation, and also the free radical damage that comes from having nutritional deficiencies. So it's a very, very important gene. In the other video, I talked about people having an overexpression of this gene. And these are the type of people that pretty much can eat what they want, smoke every day, drink, and live to be 99 years old, right? Yet everyone else has a normal expression of this gene, which makes them prone to develop diseases and cancer. So the question is, what can you do about it? There's something called epigenetics, which means above genetics. So what I want to talk about is some of the things that you can do on an epigenetic level to get an advantage of having more expression of this gene. Now, again, this gene acts as a switch that tells the cell that oxidative damage is occurring and then it turns on the body's defense mechanisms by activating genes that help the cell produce protective antioxidant molecules. So here are the pro NRF2 compounds. Number one, curcumin from turmeric. Number two, sulforaphane from cruciferous vegetables, of course. Number three, quercetin from onions, green tea. And there's quite a few other vegetables that have this compound present as well. And number four, a phytonutrient called phycetin, which is in strawberries, onions, cucumbers. And there are two other things that are not going to be a big surprise, but regular mild to moderate exercise will enhance the expression of this gene. 
And this is definitely no surprise, but fasting can increase the expression of this gene by 1.5 to five times the normal expression. So I think out of all the things you can really do, man, fasting, hands down, is the probably the most important thing to focus on. So if you're new to my channel and you want more information, click the link down below and start doing intermittent fasting on a regular basis.